ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان حبيبنا ومولانا وسيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعه باحسان الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters i start by praising allah we ask him to send his peace and blessings upon our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i remind myself first as well as all of my dear respected brothers sisters and elders to always have taqwa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always be conscious of him and aware of him Dear brothers and sisters, today I want to talk about uh, a subject that is, inshallah, a very basic and, um, uh, you know, sort of simple concept, um, primary sort of concept. But this topic has come to my mind because of a lot of things that I've been, you know, just seeing out in society, signs and trends and um, things that are very obviously, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 that we can see going on around us. Uh, some time ago I was driving and I was uh, passing the cemetery and right outside of the cemetery was a big billboard. You come out of the cemetery and the first thing you see is this big huge billboard in front of you. And on it there was uh, a naked man uh, just the top part of his body, no, you know, just no clothes. And um, it was supposed to appear as if this man had something to do with divinity. You know, the Western society uh, has inherited uh, the culture and the worldview of the Greeks and the Romans and they pic pictorialize uh, God or gods in the form of human being. Well, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all of that. But, but the point is, they try to pictorialize something that supposedly in their mind represent God. And the billboard said, it said, God is imaginary, choose reality. It is better for all of us. So, you know, aside from the fact that we as Muslims, we, we, that billboard has nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't, you know, have this issue and we don't, we cannot, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course cannot be put in any picture. And in fact, if you think you, you can uh, imagine what God is, Allah is not that, right? But, but they're speaking to the larger society and from that standpoint is very, very offensive, right? Very offensive that right in front of a cemetery where people have just buried their loved one and then many people, they turn to God to to seek comfort, uh, to have patience, they you know they can't make sense of things, but they believe that you know Allah has taken their loved one from them for a certain reason. That billboard says, "Throw all of that away, put that in the garbage." There's no such thing. Right? So a very offensive sort of uh, image right outside of a place where people are ex very, very vulnerable, attacking that core belief that people have, even if it be a distorted view that people outside of, uh, you know, other than Muslims have in terms of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So, so what does that mean, you know, when we see that? And we see other um, signs of an aggressive sort of atheism in society. It means that the atheists, those who are calling for the belief in no God, that their platform has shifted. What used to just be something that people believe in their private lives and um, you know, a personal statement of belief has now transformed into a belief system where they are calling other people to believe in the same thing. It used to just be something that people had their own ideas in their head, now it's become a da'wah. It's become a call to, um, uh, to bringing other people to that mindset. And when, if you go to, I go very often to the college campus uh, for work that I do with Muslim students. 
And you know, almost every week, there is a, uh, a booth there of, uh, they have their da'wah booth, uh, the atheists. And they have all of these pamphlets, why there's no God, and et cetera, et cetera, right? And you see this in many different places. We may think of this as a non-issue, and in many ways it is. You know, if you have firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, you, you understand and you, you're in touch with Allah's book and you're constantly reading and engaging and you're constantly praying to who other than Allah, this is not uh, an issue for most of us. But for some people it is. Because some people have inherited their Islam and they have not really given much thought to uh, you know, how can they intellectually understand why Allah is there, they go through certain rituals. And then what's even more dangerous, amongst young people, amongst young, young people, there is a trend that we see in the larger Muslim community where young Muslim people are leaving their deen. And particularly when they go to college and they encounter these philosophies and these ideologies that are very foreign to us as Muslims, but they don't have the intellectual skill set to um, you know, to uh, push that sort of um, uh, dawah that comes at them away. So, so now, you know, the, the atheist lobby, if you will, they're spending money, utilizing resources, mobilizing, recruiting, you know, looking for individuals who have issues with God and then trying to exploit um, uh, those people's relationship with their particular religion that they belong to. And, um, and they're attacking it. Even to the point, there was a masjid in New Jersey, a very large masjid, a, a very um, well-known community, a very well-known sheikh in this community, Patterson, New Jersey. Um, in the heart of the Muslim community, in the heart of the Muslim community over there in the East Coast, they have Muslim communities where people live next to each other and so forth. In big letters, Laftul Jalala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name on the billboard. Very big. And then, after that it says in Arabic, تَعْرِفُونَ أَنَّهَا خُرَافَةً وَلَكُمْ أَيْضًا حُرِّيَّةُ الْإِخْتِيَارِ And it says in Arabic, because it's an Arabic speaking community, it says, you know that it is, um, you know, some sort of fiction. It's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that it is fiction, and you also have freedom of choice. In other words, they're saying, you Muslims, you know, you guys know that this belief that you have is, is, some, is just nonsense. So you, you have the freedom to believe what you want to believe. Don't feel you're obligated to your belief system, right? Something may be laughable for many of us, but the point is it's a very active um, uh, effort that they are making to pull people away from Islam and, you know, in every other faith, an open attack. So we must start paying attention, and, and so what do we do? How do we deal with this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That who is, uh, what, uh, who is better than the one that calls to Allah, and He does righteous deeds, and He says, proclaims that I am from amongst the Muslims. We have to be very, we, have, we should not be defensive as Muslims, we should not be, you know, have this uh, closet type of approach to our deen where nobody knows about uh, that we're Muslim except the people in our household, but we're very proud to be Muslim. And we don't, uh, and what that does it, it creates a mindset within yourself that I have a responsibility not only to practice Islam, People in this room, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old and, mo and older have been practicing Islam for their whole life. But take it beyond yourself, right? Take it beyond yourself and uh, make it a part of your life and make it a part of your, li your life to also explain to others what um, Islam is. And, and that means that we also ourselves have to be equipped to be able to help people understand why there is a God why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. And we should not become, you know, robotic, legalistic Muslims. We're just concerned about halal and haram in our lives and that's it. But we also have a duty and a responsibility um, with people in, in front of us, right? And that's the primary way we're going to be able to combat this. But I want to talk about um, some argumentation that 
the atheists use to prove that there is no God. Because we need to be aware of this. And, and then all of our answers are there in the Quran. The Quran, if you analyze it, it's a constant um, uh, argumentation for why one should believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, and the multiple evidences everywhere you look that tell us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. And so some of their arguments. One of their main arguments, they say that the design came by accident, meaning the creation in its uh, totality, it somehow just happened. The, the, you know, they, even if they ascribe to the Big Bang theory in science, that there were gases and, you know, and all of this in the beginning of time, and, and they collided and creation came about, and everything by chance just happened to be, and the earth came about, and by chance uh, animals and plants and life came to be, and by chance the human being came to be as well. The response to that is very simple. The response to that is very simple. You know, even if you had numerous accidents, you would never come up with this design. If you were to take, you know, say all of the colors, if you go to Home Depot and you know, you see all the, you go to the paint department, you see the whole wall full of all of these different paint color samples. You take all of those different colors and you throw them and you splatter them on the wall in all different kinds of ways. You will never come up with the, the Mona Lisa, for example. I don't know why the Mona Lisa is such a special painting in, in, in you know, Western society, but for them it is. Uh, you will never come up with that. You'll come up with a bunch of splatter on the wall. Right? If you do it one time, ten times, a hundred, a million, a billion times, there will never come anything intelligible or anything remarkable about that painting on the wall. Accidents don't produce the beautiful world that we, say, we see around us. And you know, they, the, the mathematicians, they said, if you were to take um, 10, 10 one dollar bills, 10 singles, you know, one dollar bills, and you, and you put the n number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10, on all of these different dollar bills. You put them in your pocket, you mix them around, and you pull them out one by one. It's a one in 10 billion chance that you will pull them out in order. One in 10 billion, and that's with such a simple, uh, you know, with such a simple uh, task that you're doing and trying to sort them and come up with the, what you would like to have where they come out one, two, three, in order. One in 10 billion for just 10 small pieces of paper. So if that's the odds on that, how is it, un, you know, understandable from any uh, um, far stretch of the imagination that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful universe would come uh, into, into reality, uh, you know, uh, by, by pure accident. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the beautiful ayah in Surah At-Tur, in Surah At-Tur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the possibilities of where creation comes from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, did they come from nothing or are they the ones who created? So let's break down this ayah a little bit. The Quranic, uh, look at in, in just a few words, the, 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 the depth of, uh, of this concept and how, much, uh, how applicable it is to us today. So Allah says, did they come from nothing? Am khuliqu min ghayri shay? Did nothing does not produce something. How could this universe come out of nothing? Nothing does not produce something. And the second part of the ayah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Am humul khaliqun. Or are they the ones who created, human beings, are they the ones who created this universe? Well, we all know that uh, we didn't exist. And if you didn't exist, how can you produce yourself? Right? And, and the Qur'an is full of these sort of argumentations. So what's left? What's the third option? That there was someone who created you and put you here. Right? That something created other things. 
And that something is Allah Azza wa Jal, who created everything that exists. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says uh, in Surah Luqman, Hada Khalkullah Fa'aruni Mada Khalaku Minduni Bali Dalimuna Fi Dalalim Mubin. Allah says that this is the creation of Allah. Hada Khalkullah. This is the creation of Allah, not of anybody else, not of anything else. You know, when um, uh, people, they talk about intelligent design, this is the counter argument to atheism. They say that um, the design of this universe, uh, there is an intelligence behind it. We, we consider, this ayah is the answer to, is our equivalent of that statement. Hada khalqullah. This intelligent design, this is the creation of Allah. So show me what they created, uh, that show me what was created besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Nobody else has the ability to create any living thing besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the ayah that talks about, you know, that if they were all to come together and to try to create a fly, the most insignificant creature in this world, they could not do it. So this creation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful creation. And you know, you look at this, this world, this uh, world is like, a, is like a beautiful house. You have the ceiling above us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it saqfa mahfuza. And you have the earth that is the carpet and the sofa and the bed. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِي جَعْلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشَ أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادَ Wallahu ja'ala lakum al arda bisata that Allah has made the, the earth laid out, spread out, He has made uh, these various things. The sun and the moon are these two beautiful chandeliers in cre- in creation. The stars are the accent lighting, right? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabaraka ladi ja'ala fi samai buruja wa ja'ala fiha sirajan wa kamaram munira that Allah has made the, 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 the beautiful constellations of stars in the, in the sky and He has made the sun a lamp and He has made the moon this beautiful light and then the plants that are the food, the sustenance for everything in this world sweet and sour and spicy and all sorts of flavors and the flowers are the decoration and the animals they serve their purpose they clothe and they feed and uh, you know we eat and they transport us they provide us security all of these different khalqullah this is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation the fire the wind the air and then uh, and then man us were made as master over all of these different things in the universe this is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing upon us Right, that these different aspects of creation are created and then he put us at the center of it. Allah says, أَلَمْ تَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا That, do you not see that Allah has subjugated everything in this world for you? Everything in the heavens and the earth and he has uh, given you these apparent and hidden blessings everywhere but then you still have the atheist or the mushrik the one who associates partners with Allah and they and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he addresses them but then there are people that still will argue with you and they will do it without knowledge so when we we you know we have these sort of uh, argumentation we know it's people without knowledge or without guidance or without a book that they that is guiding the, the you know enlightened book that they're guide that able to seek guidance from right so you have all of these realities constantly discussed in the Quran that's why it's very important that we read the Quran to build up that sort of uh, intellect and that sort of understanding and the and the reading of the Quran is not just a reading of it reading of the Arabic language especially you don't understand the Arabic language and even the Arabs have a lot of uh, 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 you know uh, the, a lot of references have to be made to tafsir to understand the depth of the Quran right so we should read and understand and so we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful creation and we know هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ But they say, the atheists, they say, they say that man created God. They say man created God. That God is some sort of vague concept uh, uh, that was created by man. 
to fulfill that need to, to know that there is something greater than them. We, we see it the other way around, right? We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He put inside of us instinctually that we know that He is there. In most cultures around the world, it's the same. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, the Quran that gives us a clear understanding of who Allah is. And we haven't uh, mixed it with all of these other concepts that other uh, communities and faiths have mixed up uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. But this is the most common argumentation uh, pointing to the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the notion that the design points to the designer. Right? The design points to the designer. Even the great philosophers, they looked at the world and they say, this could not have come from anywhere. You see, even if you see things that we as human beings manufacture, you take a Mercedes, uh, a, you know, a, fine engineer, a finely engineered car, and you, nobody says that it just fell out of the sky and it's there. It had somebody who designed it, people that put it together, and then it went on, on sale and people bought it and now it's, you know, it's out in society. But nobody says it came from, no, nobody says that it came from nowhere. So why would, say, why would people say that creation that is more uh, incredible than that came from nowhere? It's uh, unthinkable, infathomable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتٌ لِلْمُقِنِينَ وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ He says, and in the earth are signs for those people who have certainty. They know. And even in your own selves, if you only looked and you only paid attention, if you look at the, the incredible creation that is the human body and the, 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 the super intricate design that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has program, programmed inside of us. But so many people walk in this world blind. They don't see, even though they see. And somebody, one of the scholars, they described it so beautifully. And they said, Al-uyunu tara suwar, wal qulubu tara al musawwir. That eyes, they see shapes and figures. But it's the hearts that see Allah, the one that made, that gave people figures. And that's why when you read the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارُ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبَ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ Right, that it is, uh, it is not uh, um, their eyes which are blind. It's not their vision, they're not blind by sight, but it's their hearts that are blind and cannot see. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to see him and to see um, his greatness in all of his creation. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum ud'ullah wa antum muqinuna bil ijabat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa ba'd. Two important points that I, I want to leave you with. Um, you know, why is, why is this dangerous? Why is atheism dangerous? Some of you may say, well, you know, but this it's not, doesn't apply to me. And Well, you know, it's as if the atheists in the, in the name of free thought and civiliz so-called civilization have sunk to a lower level than even the Arabs at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even the pagan Arabs who worshipped all of these gods, they, as if society today claiming atheism has sunk to a lower level. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَلَئِن سَأَلْتُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولَنَّ Allah. If you ask them, the, the Arabs at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu who created this, the heavens and the earth, they would say what? They would say Allah. They, they, they knew that much. They still associated partners with him, but they knew that much. Today's society, where man has evolved, mashallah, to a point where now um, they have outgrown their need for God, right? Have, have even have uh, advanced beyond that need. Right? Of course, I'm saying that sarcastically. So, my personal opinion is that atheism is the byproduct of moral decay. Right? Our society, 
because people have um, diverted themselves from organized religion. And you know, part of people's running away from uh, God is because they've run around, away from organized religion because there are certain concepts that are nonsensical in other faiths um, and that they don't believe in. And then they see the men or the women that hold position, mainly the men that hold position, they abuse those roles. We see what's taking place in the Catholic Church and the disaster in terms of how they've, how they've prayed upon. Thousands of priests across the world have prayed upon thousands and tens of thousands of innocent children, sexually abused them and so on and so forth. So of course people are going to get uh, fed up with, with religion if those people are the, the holders, uh, the, you know, the role models. But people have, uh, um, uh, have went into moral decay because of that. They are now leaving Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ And don't be like the people that forgot Allah. They forgot themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them forget themselves. They get lost in them. Those people are evildoers. So when you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you open up the door for to justify any action that you want to do and that's where we find our ourselves today the last point is that um to leave us on a positive note right to leave us on a positive note and not it's not, not all doom and gloom that the atheists have unfortunately turned to attacking religion and institutions and so on and so forth and people now make mockery of god has become commonplace there was even a video that was released recently. There was a basketball game played by different clergy people of different faiths. And one of them was a Muslim and whoever wins the basketball game, well that person is just, that, uh, that means that that religion is right. A nonsensical mockery of God and has become commonplace to people. But we have the ability as Muslims to bring sense to speak logic, to intellectually appeal to people about the truth, about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, but that only happens if we take those steps. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be those who work for His cause and for those who bring light to this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide our families and protect us and protect our families. Allahumma inni da'in faqulu ameen. Allahumma gfil lil muslimina wal muslimat, wal mu'minina wal mu'minat, al ahya'i minhum wal amwat, inna ka sami'un qaribun mujibu da'wat. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة